Hey guys, welcome back. This past week, I challenged myself to only eating vegan foods. For an entire week, I ate foods that did not contain meat, eggs, dairy products, or any other product derived from an animal. Now that I've completed this challenge, I realized what I got myself into took a lot of change. It's a completely different lifestyle from the one I was living. I went from eating so much meat to vegan meat in a matter of days. Don't get me wrong, it was hard, but it wasn't that hard. After we finished dinner that night, I was in desperate need of groceries for the rest of the week. So Andrea and I headed over to Sprouts and did a lot of shopping. For breakfast on Monday, I didn't really get to film much because I was running late for class. I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be late. So I had to skip out on the breakfast that I had planned for that morning, but I did get an iced almond milk latte and it was pretty good. For lunch, I made some frozen pad thai noodles that are literally so good, I definitely recommend. I needed something quick and easy to eat before meals because I had a class later that night and I didn't really have much downtime between eating and cooking my meals. But the pad thai was so, 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 so delicious. I literally have some stocked in my freezer right now and I just, I, I can't wait for the moment that I get to eat them. For dinner that night, I made some stir fry. Hold the chicken, please. Add some white rice. It's almost the same way as how I make my regular chicken stir fry, except obviously with the chicken, and then the stir fry sauce that I used um, has vegan ingredients, obviously. So. Throughout this whole process, I took note of how I felt each day, and I noticed that on the first day, I felt extremely hungry. Almost 30 minutes after eating each meal, I would feel like I was starving and like I hadn't eaten anything all day. So I was snacking so much on the first day. I had kombucha, I had fruit, I had a fig bar, I had skinny pop popcorn. But the good news is I felt so much better the rest of the week. I just needed to get through that first day. For breakfast on Tuesday morning, I grabbed an acai bowl from a place across the street from my school. This was actually my first time having an acai bowl. I got something called the Sunset Bowl, which had pineapple, mango, strawberries, and unsweetened coconut milk topped with organic hemp flaxseed granola, coconut, fresh strawberries, and fresh kiwi. For lunch that day, I felt like I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up, something that was gonna make me feel like, okay, You've got this. This isn't that hard, Alyssa. So I drove down to Carl's Jr. to try their new Beyond Meat Burger. Hi. Um, can I have the new Beyond Famous Star? Just a sandwich or the meat? Uh, just a sandwich. Can I have two of them without cheese and without mayo? No cheese and mayo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just two medium fries as well, please. Okay. And that'll be all. Okay. Thank you. You know how much that was? That was twenty dollars mm -hmm. for two burgers and two fries.
I will say I was very pleasantly surprised at how good it tasted, but if I'm being honest, the meat, it looked a little weird, you know? It just, there was something about the way it looked that really was unappetizing. Kind of grossed me out a little bit, but I didn't look at it so that I could finish my burger, and I did. It was good, it's just like, if you look at the meat, it might like freak you out a little bit, but it's not really meat, it's just plants. Hashtag burger. For dinner that night, I decided to make something very simple, tofu with green onions and white rice. I marinated the tofu overnight the night before in some garlic salt and it turned out pretty good if I do say so myself. My sisters used to make this for me when I was younger and I remember it tasting so, so good. But the way I made it, it kind of tasted a little bit off, but I think it was just the way I cooked the tofu. I think if I cooked it a little bit longer, I probably would have liked it better. But overall, it was good. As usual, I was running late to class this morning and I actually wasn't all that hungry either, so I decided to not get any breakfast and just have a fig bar and some water. You might think that's sad. I think it's cost efficient, sweetie. For lunch, I decided to make some pizza. I was watching Jessie Smile's video where she made her lasagna and she was saying that a lot of vegan cheeses just taste very funky and they taste good in small portions. I didn't know that. So I went a little bit overboard on my cheese for the pizza and it looked heavenly. Tasted not so great, not so great. A little funky. Everything else is delicious though. The mushrooms, the pizza crust, the baby spinach, the marinara, ugh. But that damn cheese. For dinner that night, I had some El Pollo Loco. I ordered a grande avocado chicken bowl, but I took out the sour cream and the cheese, and I substituted the chicken for extra avocado, and it was so good. You got avocado, you got fresh garden salsa, you got beans, you got rice. Mmm, highly recommend. For breakfast on Thursday morning, I had toast with some Nutiva on it, which is basically like a vegan Nutella, and I put some sliced almonds on it. Oh, so good. For lunch, I made a vegan Alfredo with some broccoli. <laughs> What I loved about this was that it was so easy to make and the vegan Alfredo sauce that I used was so good, so flavorful, and so different from what I was used to. I definitely recommend that you use it the next time you make any type of pasta. For dinner that night, I had Carl's Jr. again. There's not much to say here. Friday morning didn't happen for me. I was up until 4 a.m. with friends the night before, so I ended up waking up like around 1 the next day so i didn't have breakfast definitely didn't have breakfast but for lunch the next day i just had some leftovers of the alfredo okay, but here's where things get exciting for this day okay because for dinner i had taco bell mm -hmm, that's right hi how are you i'm good thank you 
you, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What can I get for you? A crunch wrap with no beef, no cheese, and no, no sour cream. Okay. Can I add guac and beans to that, please? Okay. And then um, a seven layer burrito okay. with no sour cream and no cheese. Okay. And that'll be all. Just, you know, one at the second window. Thank all right. you. Thank you so much. I will keep it 100% honest with you, as I always do. The crunch wrap was good. It was like an eight out of 10. The guac was good too. Never had the guac from Taco Bell. The burrito, on the other hand, it was cold. I thought it was supposed to be a hot burrito, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was cold and it didn't taste good. Like, you know how you can feel like, no, there was no love put into it? Like, there was no love put into it. There was a little bit of like hatred, maybe some spit because I veganized it, so maybe they spit in it or something. It just wasn't good. I work Saturday morning, so I had to settle with some more Nutiva on toast with sliced almonds on it and some coffee. When I came home from work that day, I was ravenous. So I quickly heated up some pad thai noodles. I had that, that calmed my hunger for a bit. And then shortly after, I slaved away in the kitchen to make our dinner. I was literally on my feet from the morning until night. So I really wasn't in the mood to record the whole cooking process, but lucky for you, I used Jessie Smiles vegan lasagna recipe. So she does have a video for that. And I will link it down below if you're interested in watching, seeing the process, because it's very interesting, very, 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 good and I highly recommend it. It is so, so good. I was literally so amazed at how cheesy it felt because we used, okay, because you know how there's like, <laughs> let's get like technical here. You know how there's like a ricotta in lasagna? It's a type of cheese. Obviously you can't have ricotta cheese in a vegan lasagna because it's not vegan. So we had to substitute the cheese part of it with some tofu. So it was the tofu ricotta and it was so good. You couldn't even tell it was tofu so amazed like that shouldn't even be allowed but it is and it's great sunday mornings are for leftover lasagna and some coffee well not at the same time of course but i mean yeah i had them at separate times let me just say that morning i had my almond milk latte from coffee bean <gasps> so good Literally so good. Y'all are sleeping on coffee bean. I'm sleeping on coffee bean. Their almond milk is so good. And I'll just leave you with that because it's so good. It's so good. For lunch, I finished the remaining lasagna that I had. I killed it off. I'm kind of sad that it's gone, but I'm so happy that it came into my life because like it's the best recipe for lasagna ever. So I'm happy to have that like in my knowledge so that I can just cook it whenever I want or like whenever there's a special occasion going on. And for dinner, I had pad thai. I love pad thai. When I told my friends and family that I was going vegan for a week, people's responses were mostly negative. I got comments like, you're crazy. That's too hard. Why would you do that? I could never do that. And the most common, I can't live without meat. It's crazy now after I've gone through this process to analyze what people said because that's how I felt in the days leading up to this challenge. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this was because I noticed that my eating habits were not good at all. Not good for me and not good for the environment. I was eating meat in almost every single meal I consumed. If you're confused on how eating meat and animal products is bad for the environment, don't worry, because I was too. But I'm gonna try to break it down for you as best I can using some articles that I found online. Meat production requires vast amounts of energy. Not only do you have to grow the crops to feed the animals, but fossil fuels are also burnt in the raising, slaughtering, and transportation of animals. In fact, livestock and their byproducts account for 51% of annual worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. So if you choose to eat meat, your greenhouse emissions can be twice that of someone on a plant-based diet. Secondly, poorly managed animal waste products from the meat industry are polluting our environment and destroying habitats. Many pollutant waste products get washed into our systems. The nitrogen found in these wastes causes algae to grow on the water and starves the fish of oxygen. This process leads to the creation of dead zones, places where few species can survive. As of 2011, 530 marine areas were identified as dead zones. Finally, Food choices can have a big impact on our water demand. Unlike the majority of plant-based foods, raising 
feeding animals requires vast amounts of water. This is because animals need water to drink, wash, clean their living spaces, and cool themselves during hot periods. In fact, a study comparing the water footprint of different foods found that while a soy burger has a water footprint of 158 liters, a beef burger has a water footprint of 2,350 liters, which is over 14 times as big. As someone who ate meat almost every single day for almost every meal and had whole milk every morning in my coffee, I'm living proof that you can do it too. So for the people that think that they could never go vegan, I challenge you to try it for a day. And then maybe a week from now or a month from now, you can try for two, three, or four days. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm going to completely switch over to being vegan because that would be a lie. But after this week, I can confidently say that I know that I can get through another week of being vegan. And now I have more tools, resources, and knowledge to help me get through that week, possibly even more. I wanted to try this process for myself and to document it and show you guys because I had dinner like four times through a drive-thru. Almost every restaurant can accommodate to vegans. All you have to do is substitute things out, ask what things are made of, make sure that you read the labels on the things that you're buying, on the products you're buying. An interesting fact that I found out, my boyfriend was drinking Coke. I was like, hey, pretty sure Coke is vegan. I don't think they have any animal products in it. So I looked it up just to be safe. Technically it is vegan because it doesn't have like eggs or milk or whatever, but it has fish gelatin in it which is very weird and strange, kind of gross. Like, why is there fish gelatin in it? I think being vegan has helped me to actually look at what I'm putting in my body. It also helped me to grow as a person more than I feel like I would have ever grown without it because for 2019, I wanna do so many things. I just wanna be a better person, grow and just develop and learn and make mistakes and whatever, but I accomplished like four to five things already on my vision board. I was able to cook more. I was able to eat better. I was able to help the environment. I was able to drink more water. And I was even able to work out a little bit. I worked out like two times throughout this week. Not the greatest, but you know, it, it motivated me. I was in a better state of mind and I just, I wanted to better myself. And that was great. I'm very proud of of what this challenge has taught me. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Um, have you guys tried being vegan? Would you guys be interested? Are you guys vegan? How do you do it? Let me know. I'd love to know. So that's it for this week, guys. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. Also, make sure to turn on my notification bell to be notified every single time I upload. As always, I love you guys very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.